What's going on everyone? This is Curtis and today we're talking about the Q3 earnings report from Butterfly Network. They reported earnings on November 15th. As you can see from the stock chart, the market was not too happy with what they saw. However, since first writing this, they've actually seen a pretty big comeback and have actually recovered to basically the level they were at before earnings were announced. More on that rise later. So what was it on the report that actually triggered this massive slide? Let's take a look and find out. So as we move along in this video, we're going to have some comparison slides of the Q2 earnings report from 2021 and the Q3 earnings report from 2021 that was just released. The Q2 report will be on the left and the Q3 report will be on the right. Let's first start off with the revenue growth slide. First off, you can see here that we look at Q2 of 2021 and Q2 of 2020 with comparison of Q3 of 2021 and 2020, we can see they had 40% versus 44% growth. While the 44% was better than 40%, Digging a little bit into these numbers here, we can see that Q3 of 2020 was actually a lower starting point than Q2 of 2020. While at first glance, this might not look like a big difference, it's actually $11.8 million is almost 17% higher than the $10.1 million, making it easier to show a larger percentage of growth off a lower base. And actually, if we look at overall numbers of revenue growth between the two quarters, we can see that Q2 of 2021 had $4.7 million of growth, while Q3 of 2021 only had $4.5 million. There could be some seasonality to these sales. For the company trading at valuations like this, any signs of revenue growth will make investors hesitant. As we keep going down the presentation here, one of the key slides that stood out to me was a partnership with Caption Health. Now, partnering with an AI company is going to be key to product differentiation. In my opinion, images generated by the butterfly and the competition's devices will always be pretty similar to the human eye. But the first is able to train AI to recognize what it is seeing to do both capture better photos and attempt to interpret the image will gain a foothold that should escalate over time as more people flock to the best system, which provides that key driver to the flywheel, data. Long-term investors will want to keep an eye on this partnership. The next slide talks about the partnership with Abdul Latif Jamil Health. More on this slide later. And the final slide we'll discuss before the financials is about how they're innovating in the veterinary space. This is a big step as it was viewed previously as a market to attack after doctors, nurses, and midwives. With IQ Plus Vet, they've made adjustments to the probe, which will provide better product for veterinarians and their patients. This is a great step as it allowed them to directly target a large set of veterinarians. Let's next roll down to the financials. As you probably noticed, the dollars for subscriptions went up dramatically compared to the number of devices when compared to last quarter. For Q2 of 2021, they sold nearly 6,500 units for $3.5 million in subscription sales. However, in Q3, they only sold just over 5,500 devices, but had $3.8 million in subscription revenue, an increase of $300,000 despite nearly 1,000 less devices sold. I at first glance thought this was because they realized revenue on a monthly or quarterly basis as subscriptions are used, but Q3 of 2020 had less subscription revenue within Q2, which makes me think it's probably tied to a yearly subscription. This could just coincide with a large number of people that decided to renew subscriptions because I didn't see anything on the website that showed any sort of change in the subscription fee. If someone out there is aware of the reason for this jump, please let me know in the comments because I didn't also hear it or read it when I reread the earnings report. Moving down here, we can see that they changed the slide to adjusted profit instead of cost of revenue. It's always interesting to see what metrics companies like to highlight to investors. In this case, they either had nothing of interest to report regarding decrease in cost of revenue, or more likely, they just wanted to highlight the change in the adjusted gross profit and adjusted gross margins. It's important to note here that these figures were only once they excluded $11.6 million in non-recurring loss on a purchase commitment. On the next slide here, my only takeaway is the cash burn. They burned about $50 million last quarter, and at the current pace here, they have enough money, it looks like, for about eight to nine more quarters. It's important to keep an eye on that figure. If it gets below four quarters of runway, I'm probably going to raise more money. Nothing so far has been a real showstopper, but then we get to the full year guidance. Even though we're only one quarter away from the end of the year, they still dropped full year guidance down 16 to 18 million dollars. This most likely means a major deal fell through. This also now represents 30 to 34 percent revenue growth, a significant decrease from the 64 to 73 percent that was reported just last quarter. This is the reason the stock dropped after they released this information. And as of writing this video, they're currently trading at $1.7 billion market cap. This means that at the end of the year, they'll be trading at about 27 times sales. So is the growth story falling apart? Will the stock continue to fall as perhaps more reasonable sales figures are put into pricing models? Or are there still big things ahead? Well, after writing most of the script after the big dip after the earnings report, 
they've since had a pretty big comeback. It seems the market is excited about the partnership with Abdul Latif Jamil Health. This partnership will help them bring the device to about 2 billion people in the Middle East, North Africa, Turkey, and India. So after the huge swing down, after they adjust the revenue forecast for the year, and the huge swing up, I'll leave it to you to decide if the growth story is still intact, and they should expect 2022 to be the best year yet, or if this trend of slowing growth is actually to continue, and the stock will probably slide as a result. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.